right. Let's see if we can get one to bite. These days, Steve Barkowski spends a lot of time catching, but he initially made a name for himself as the Atlanta Falcons' first great passer. Growing up on the West Coast, Steve was the long, blonde-haired golden boy for the Cal Bears. A magnificent senior season catapulted him onto everyone's radar, especially the Falcons. Atlanta Falcons select Steve Bartkowski, quarterback, University of California. Atlanta was so high on the six foot four playmaker, they traded away the game's top offensive tackle and moved up three spots in the draft to get to number one. In exchange, they took the hope for the future of the franchise. 49ers will come with a three man rush. Bartkowski to throw. He is going long down the near sideline. It's going to be a jump ball, and it is pulled down by Billy Johnson. Johnson inside the 10. so many different chapters of the Parkowski story. Number one draft pick, all the passing records you held, and back then the game was different, so that was especially impressive. Yeah. Would you have a favorite memory from your time as a Falcon? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, probably the whole season of 1980 was just a great, great time. I mean, we were started off three and three, and uh, then we rang off nine in a row. You know, that, that whole season was magical. Um, Somebody different every week, you know. Um, guys recovering a fumble and taking it for a touchdown. Uh, me throwing a touchdown pass. You know, Wayne Andrews doing some of his heroics, you know, through the years as he did so many times. It was just great. It was like the ultimate. It was a consummate team effort, and it was a great football team. It really was. You know, Atlanta will always have a, a you know prime spot in my heart. I gave you know uh, 11 of the best years I had of my life, you know, to to the city of Atlanta, trying to bring them a championship and. Uh, didn't quite get over the hump, but um, the people have always been kind and generous to me. Moving forward from his time in football, Steve has taken a new path, leading him all the way to Twin Bridges, Montana. Pretty special place if you're a fly fisher. As far as uh, the United States of America, this is pretty hard to beat. Did you instantly fall in love? Did you know this was going to be? I did. Be? I did. You know, Jen, I, honestly, you know, I've heard people say this before. It's either in you or it's not, you know, and as soon as I set foot in the state, um, you know, I, I just instantly loved the, I loved the, the uh, surroundings, you know, I love the uh, topography. I just love everything about this state. Instantaneously, it uh, just captured my heart. He just loves the outdoors. He's in his happy place. He's always wanted to live here. And so it's, it's really cool to see him kind of have that dream come true. The home to Yellowstone and Glacier National Park wasn't just a dream for Steve. He raised both of his sons with an outdoor mentality, taking every opportunity they had to fish, hunt, and enjoy nature. With no plan except living off the land in a tent on some family property, his son, Pete, beat him to the punch by moving out to Montana first. I've been working in the commercial world for, uh, I think, 12 or 13 years, and made, I pretty much ticked all the boxes of the achievements I wanted to get through, you know, and then kind of looked at my life and the next guy in line, I was going to be him, and that's about it, you know, and did I want to be him, and is this what I want to do with my life, and just decided to pull the plug and didn't know what I was gonna do. So how did the lodge come about? Pete and I had come up here and hunted this property uh, with a great friend of mine uh, who owns the property, owns the lodge. And uh, just through a sort of miraculous uh, set of circumstances, the guy that owns the property asked uh, Pete if he would, you know, um, have an interest in, you know, becoming an outfitter, uh, you know, he'd already, he already was a guide. He said, uh, you know, I'd love for you to take a swing at it. And um, Pete said, uh, well, Mr. Jim, he said, I've never done anything like that before, but it sounds like too good of an opportunity for me to turn down. None of this was part of the plan, which makes it even more special to me that it just kind of happened. And, you know, by the grace of God and by 
great friends that have tried to help us throughout the years, this place has become something really special. Think about just stopping your hand by your ear and then wait for it to pull on you and then go forward. That's it, there you go. See my straight with that one? See if I'm letting that line out. Lovely. Point at it and strip it down. Awesome. Good job. You're a good coach. <laughs> Natural. It's almost like he does this for a living or something. <laughs> I'm just the luckiest man on earth. Not only to have my mom and dad here working with me, but to have such a great job and have fun doing what you're doing and that stuff, it's just hard to find. Working with his son has given Steve some new skills to add to his already accomplished resume. He's now the Lodge's hash slinger. How would you grade his breakfast cooking skills? Uh, out of 10, probably a 25. Wow. No, he's good, <laughs> he's good. He doesn't, he doesn't change it up much, but he's got really good stuff going on and everybody loves it. And I, I think they might be more pumped up about, man, Steve Bartkowski cooking for me <laughs> than anything. So, so it's kind of a perk too. You can't get him out of that kitchen, he loves it. This is his lodge, it's his, it's his baby. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to do what I think I can do to, to add value to it. I don't want anything from it. I don't think God's taking care of us in a way that, ways that I can't even you know, begin to understand. It's given me something that I can give myself to, and I love sharing this. I mean, who, I mean, who could walk away from here and say, you know, it's just not, yeah, it's just not that cool. <laughs> Getting here wasn't always a sure thing for Steve. Just two decades after being on top of the world as an NFL quarterback, Steve received devastating news for him and his family. I feel like I got a new lease on life, you know, in 2005 I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. Uh, you know, certainly wouldn't wish that on anybody. It was, um, it was a real struggle, you know. I mean, uh, it was a hard, de hard deal to get through, but it was uh, something that uh, obviously God had teed up for me. I uh, remember having a conversation after being diagnosed, uh, 52 years old, you know, I'm, I'm driving home from the, from the diagnosis and I just had a conversation with the Lord. I said, you know, God, if this is the hill I got to climb, then so be it. You know, put me in touch with the right people to help me fight this thing and let's go march up this hill. It was really tough on the whole family because, I mean, he, he was dead for, um, you know, a couple minutes or something and they, they got him back to life. And I was like, all right, well, my journey's not done yet is the way that he looked at it, you know, which was huge. So every day is a blessing to have him around and never try to take any of them for granted, you know, and that's a, that's an easy thing to do when you haven't had that experience. So, so I think it brought us all together a little bit more too. He handled that so charmingly. I mean, it was kind of humbling in a lot of ways and he was just always great. He always is, he's always got a great attitude about things. And I do think some of that comes from sports, like let's do it, we're doing, you know, let's come on, let's go. And gratefully it worked out, he's doing great. It made me understand the uh, significance of, of, of a real, strong, growing faith and how that can propel you, your attitude and, and everything else, you know, for you to make the decisions that are going to, you know, be lasting decisions in your life that, um, that you know, you can rely on. Stay. Sit. Stay. Go on. I bet being out here is so good for your soul. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't be smiling as much as I smile these days. And you know, a lot of it has to do with seeing uh, your, your kids be passionate about what they're doing, seeing their success that they're having, you know, and, uh, and you know, I mean, the, the bottom line is, I want there to be peace and I want people to be content and happy. Um, and if I can add something, uh, you know, one of those aspects to somebody's life, and you know, uh, I'm all in. So you're happy? Thrilled, thrilled, thrilled uh, every day, every day. I just marvel at how blessed I am. It's just been an incredible life. Right,